I'm Bernard Shaw in Johannesburg. The casualty count from today's bombing in downtown Johannesburg now stands at nine people dead, more than 100 injured. Police say a car packed with 200 pounds of explosives blew up near two offices of Nelson Mandela's African National Congress. No one has claimed responsibility. The bomb went off on the final days of campaigning for South Africa's first all-race elections. Nelson Mandela closed out his campaign today with a huge Durban. Durban is in the Natal province, a stronghold of his rival and Katha Freedom Party leader Mangosuto Budulezi. As for Budulezi, he appeared today at a rally in the black township of Soweto, a Mandela stronghold. Budulezi is not just the leader of Nkatha. He is a chief of the Zulu tribe, the largest ethnic group in South Africa. He also is the leader of KwaZulu, a black homeland that the white South African government carved out of the Natal province. CNN's Brent Sadler takes a closer look at the Zulu nation. Rolling into KwaZulu, a column of heavily armed South African troops. The hammerhead sent in to crack down on violence in the embattled province of Natal. In their tribal heartland, Zulus celebrate a marriage. Zulus who want greater independence, regardless of election victory or defeat. In Carter harbors deep mistrust of the ANC and fears a post-election backlash. They may arrest some of us, they may detain some of us, they may kill some of us, but that is not going to destroy the spirit in the people. While in Carter's thirst for more provincial freedom from central government appeals to many, the majority of Zulus do not bear arms with these warriors, but side with the ANC. In Carter's chief, Mangasuta Butelezi, knows that his decision to stand for president was an act of political insanity, despite its popular portrayal as skillful brinkmanship. He may seem destined to be squeezed out, but the man who's led KwaZulu for over 40 years is not about to roll over. Uh, I don't think that even if their aim is, is to elbow me out, that in fact they'll easily succeed to do so. Emergency law in Natal and a ban on traditional Zulu weapons have no impact on the ground. Clubs, knives, spears, handguns and automatic rifles, they're all here in open disregard of the new emergency regulations. But since in Carter's election boycott was lifted, the level of political violence showed encouraging signs of falling. Surprisingly, in Carter can draw on support among a minority of whites, including people like Martin and Elna LaRue. They own a livestock farm in a rough and ready world outside Alundi. They also believe that KwaZulu independence is worth struggling for. I will fight alongside black Zulus any time, any time of the day, every minute of the night. I will fight for it because we are a free country here. At least all Zulus, ANC and Inkata supporters can agree on the position of their king, Goodwill Zulatini. He will rule as a constitutional monarch with no political base. As the king of the people, I don't like to lead the dead. I want to lead the living. 115 years ago on this famous battlefield, Isandawana, a Zulu army defeated the British. It stands as a monument to Zulu defiance against overwhelming odds. The Zulus were eventually conquered, but not before Isandawana and the British commander's fatal mistake. His greatest fear was that the Zulus en masse were going to get through that broken country and that they were going to cross and get into Natal and wreak havoc in Natal. For Inkata warriors, the election represents another famous battle. It draws parallels with their history. For as the sun sets on three centuries of white domination, they will go on struggling for more power in the new South Africa. Brent Sadler, CNN, Natal. That's it for now from here. Of course, we'll have continuous live coverage throughout the elections. For Jean Meserve in Washington, I'm Bernard Shaw in Johannesburg, South Africa.